Our story today takes us to Galilee after a tour through Gentile territory. Remember that Galilee was where his power had been most strikingly manifested, where most of Jesus' works of mercy had been performed and his teaching given. Let that sink in for a second, because I want to provide some context for what's going to happen next. The next thing that happens is that a party of Pharisees and Sadducees, who, by the way, were bitter enemies previously, but now they join against a common enemy, Christ, and come to him asking for a sign. So there's this word that's gotten really popular over the past few years, so much so that it was voted Word of the Year in 2022 by Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. The word is gaslighting, and it refers to the psychological manipulation of a person, usually over an extended period of time, that causes the victim to question the validity of their own thoughts, perception of reality, or memories, and typically leads to confusion, loss of confidence and self-esteem, uncertainty of one's emotional or mental stability, and a dependency on the perpetrator. According to research, People who gaslight are driven mainly by two goals. Number one, to avoid accountability for their own bad behavior. And number two, to control the victim's behavior. Did you know that there's a thing called spiritual gaslighting? That's when an authority figure manipulates their victim emotionally through spiritual or religious information or through beliefs, doctrines, and even scripture to invalidate your perception or spiritual experience. Remember that the point of doing this is to create self-doubt and to question your spiritual experience. Show us a sign. The Pharisees and Sadducees were trying to spiritually gaslight Jesus. That request completely invalidated everything Jesus had done up to that moment in Galilee. <laughs> had they been living under a rock for the past few years? Had they not heard and seen all the miracles Jesus had done? Was that not worth anything? For you and I, it might seem so obvious that Jesus did the right thing by not showing them a sign. But did you know that even Jesus' disciples thought he should have shown a sign to silence his enemies? This must have been a huge temptation for Jesus. I can remember another time when Jesus was asked to perform a miracle in order to prove his divinity his messiahship? If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread or jump off this rooftop. Satan himself uttered those words, which again, to you and I, might not sound like much of a temptation, but for Jesus, it was so tempting to perform these signs with the hopes that they would believe he was the messiah. And sometimes we act like those Pharisees and Sadducees asking for more proof of God when he's already done so much for us. Oh, I pray we don't engage in spiritual gaslighting, not with Jesus, not with anyone. And that is our nugget for today. I'll see you tomorrow.